Thousands of individual threads, loaded by hand, are woven together to create one of the most intricate fabrics in the world, Lever's lace. But making this lace isn't easy. A new design can take three months to produce, and depending on the materials, one square meter can cost over $500. Despite the premium price, the lace industry in France is a fraction of its former size, and it's hard to find new lace makers to continue the trade. So how is Lever's Lace made? And why is it so expensive? This is a Lever's Loom. It's six meters long and over 100 years old. These looms were invented to match the quality of handmade lace. Each design is translated from paper into these punch cards, which are fed into the loom to create a pattern. These looms are essential for making Lever's Lace, but there are only a few hundred left today, 40 of which are at this factory in the northern French city of Caudry. John Brock has been making lace since 1889. We are selling holes. We are selling a fabrics with mainly holes, so it's mainly empty, but it is why it's so interesting because we have artistic possibility. Every day we are making something different compared to the other fabric. Unlike cheaper mass-produced lace, designs aren't embroidered on top of fabric. They're continuously woven, creating a beautifully complex pattern. The machine might do the weaving, but it takes around 20 people to produce Lever's lace. It all starts with a design. Jean Brock uses a library of old designs, some from as far back as 1925. But it also creates new designs, which can take three to five weeks to complete. This is the most time-consuming part of the process, but the most delicate is threading the loom. Thousands of individual threads feed into the machine. Detailed designs need more threads, which raises the price. Workers load these small disks called bobbins by hand, keeping each thread separate and taut. Oui, c'est pas facile. Il faut vraiment avoir une bonne vision et beaucoup de patience. C'est très difficile. Workers place each bobbin into a carriage and check to ensure consistent weight and tension. When we set up a machine, we set up more than 15,000 yarns into the machine. We start from scratch, we start from zero, so we need to put every yarn at the right position. Once the loom starts running, lace makers are surrounded by an ocean of sound. Despite being such an old machine, each loom runs with extreme precision. The loom weaves a design line by line as workers refill it with more thread. Loom experts, called tullis, are in charge of overseeing the whole weaving process. They watch each loom, looking and listening for any tears. A mistake at this step could seriously set back production. If there's a break, Tullis reach into the loom, carefully repairing individual threads. Frederic has been working on these looms for 26 years. He checks to ensure that the original design is being recreated on the loom. What's passionate in this work is that it's des vieilles machines that have 100 years, voire plus. On sort des, des, on sort de leurs tels très fins et de très bonne qualité, and c'est vraiment ça qui, qui est passionnant. Each step requires an expert, but this makes finding new workers challenging. Ben, en ce moment, on a six jeunes ici en formation. Ça fait quelques mois qu'ils sont là, mais pour qu'ils qu commencent seulement à être bien formés, il faut au moins trois, quatre ans. Et pour avoir un tulis indépendant sur un métier, il faut compter cinq, six ans. It's a work of passion, and it's for that reason that uh, all the people who work with us. Uh, most of them spend 15, 20, 25 years in the same company. That's the main difficult things to find for the new generation. But even after 20 or 25 years, you still learn things. It's so fascinating and it's a passion for people.
Mon père, euh, étant tuliste, m'a proposé de venir euh, essayer le métier de raccommodeuse. Les filles qui étaient présentes m'ont tout appris. Euh. Isabelle est is une lace inspector. Lace right off the loom is never perfect, so it's the inspector's job to spot any mistakes. Donc ici, le tuliste a signalé un défaut par une pastille. Donc ici, le but, c'est ben, de regarder. Donc là, effectivement, on voit qu'il y a un écart, donc c'est un défaut. Je tire bien pour bien voir. Je cherche les défauts, les trous. Donc là, on peut voir un trou. Donc quand c'est comme ça, hop, on enfile l'aiguille. These highly skilled workers inspect every inch of the lace and repair each section by hand. The repairs must be indistinguishable from the rest of the lace. Donc ici encore pareil, hein. on appelle ça un manque. En fait, il y a un fil qui a sauté. Le fil il est là. Donc hop, elles mettent une épingle toujours. Lever's lace with no additions costs around 45 to 90 dollars per square meter. That's over 10 times the price of mass-produced lace. But lace with add-ons like pearls, crystals, or sequins can cost several hundred dollars more. Dresses or lingerie made with Lever's lace usually cost a few hundred dollars at minimum. But some can cost a lot more. For the haute couture things, it can go just no sky limits. In addition to the materials and complicated manufacturing, the looms themselves increase the price. Lever's looms aren't made today. Companies have to maintain the looms that they have. It's not impossible to build a Lever's loom, but the costs required to manufacture it would be more than the demand for the product. Because of that, lace manufacturers rely on existing looms and even share spare parts between companies. But the lace industry in France used to look a lot different. In the early 20th century, there were tens of thousands of lace-related jobs. But as production modernized and fashion trends shifted, the industry consolidated to two main parts of France, Caudry and Calais. Today, only a few thousand jobs remain, and only a handful of the traditional lace producers are left. Competition from cheaper lace manufacturers has eliminated a lot of the industry, Many remaining producers focus on the high-end market. I think our customers are really different, but we still always looking what the mass production does. Our main advantage is to be ahead of the fashion. We work with a creative trends office to know what the fashion will be, and we need to anticipate the next fashion trends. Demand for Jean Brock's lace had actually been increasing for the last few years, but the COVID-19 pandemic hit the industry hard. Brands like Chanel and Ralph Lauren rely on companies that create Lever's lace, but if demand doesn't increase, it'll be difficult to maintain the industry. I hope so, it will be easier. I hope so, but uh, I'm not sure. We just spent two terrible years, so I hope now it will be uh, more comfortable to invest and to train the new generation of people.